Jedi Academy game review, or should I say expansion pack review. You are a new student at the Jedi Academy, which has been mostly safe since, you know, the whole, the events of Jedi Outcast. And basically, you go on a bunch of missions, a couple of them having to do with the overall storyline. Which I'm not really going to get too much into because spoilers. Which I'm going to avoid here. The. There are some basic attractions to this which deserve mentioning. You do go to a lot of different planets because pretty much every mission is just that mission, you know, it's, they're all separate. And you yourself get to choose the order in which you go to them, and it's like every time you've completed, I think, about four or five separate missions, you do another storyline mission. And because of this, you do get to explore, excuse me, some very different environments. Some of them are you know, operated by remnant forces, so, you know, they have, like, you know, generators or various things there, you know, factories that you explore. There's one that's just, like, almost all sand. You know, there are, there are various ones. You can now also choose in addition to just having a regular lightsaber, you can also go the Darth Maul route with, you know, double-bladed lightsaber, and you can also use, you know, a lightsaber in each hand. And you don't even have to whine about how your master doesn't understand. The Force powers are now, all the ones that are available in multiplayer are available in single player, and it's a bit like Mysteries of the Sith. In fact, this is the second game's Mysteries of the Sith, although it isn't quite as bad as Mysteries of the Sith. Some of the powers that you can choose in single player have very little use in single player, and they didn't really seem to consider this, you know, it, you don't choose the powers in single player in Jedi Outcast. They grow over time, you know, so it makes sure that when you get to the level where you have to be able to jump, you know, I think it's eight times your own height or something, you can, because, you know, you couldn't have put those in the wrong one or something. In this instead, they seem to just go for none of the powers are completely essential pretty much. I think one or two of them might be. I think the neutral ones do progress regularly, but, you know, other than that, the light and the dark. And yes, you do get to make the choice of whether you want to be on the light side or the dark side. And they wimp out and say, you make the choice. You know, they don't, there, there's no consequences to your actions. You can, you know, behave however you want to behave. And regardless of how far on the light or the dark side you are, there'll be a point in the game near the end where you're basically told, do this and you go to the light side, do this and you do, you, know, you go to the dark side instead. I've already talked a lot about how I resent the, the whole hand-holding and making it easier. It's, it's a video game. It's, we're playing it to be challenged, okay? So it's, yeah. Anyway, the graphics are about the same as Jedi Outcast. The level design is pretty good, and there are some pretty interesting, relatively unique missions among them. There are again guest stars from the Star Wars Galaxy Universe, and 
at this point it's just too much. There aren't many in Jedi Outcast, and this one just seems to cram in any that it hadn't already. You know, Luke is of course still there, because he is running the Academy. But then there are some others... I'm just gonna give this one away because it's in the demo. Chewbacca is there. Now, much like his inclusion in the third movie, which again isn't really a spoiler because it's right there in the trailer, it just makes the galaxy feel smaller because it's like, wait, in the old ones it was like every new movie, new species, new planets, you know, there's something, new machines, but now it's just, oh, hey, remember this from the other one, you know, yeah, we get it, we've, we've seen it before, but if you just reference it, you know, that's fine, that tells us, oh, yeah, that's like, you know, or, you know, reference an event in one of the movies that places it, you know, continuity-wise, but having the character just plane up here, it's like, you know, I don't know, couldn't we have met someone new, a new exciting species? They do have a couple of new species in this that we haven't seen before, at least I haven't seen them before, but I don't go much beyond movies, really. But then there are also, you know, there are even the there are sand creatures, there are those little you know, hood and cape ones that, you know, with the robot deconstructing and all that. The overall plot is fine. I don't know, it just isn't quite as interesting overall, I would say, as that of Jedi Outcast, and much less that of you know, Jedi Knight itself. One nice thing is that it really makes a very big impact which side you choose to, you know, play for near the end. It also did in Jedi Knight, but Jedi Knight has much less lightsaber on lightsaber action. This has a pretty absurd amount and near the end, who you fight will literally be determined by what side you're playing for. And the very final boss will indeed also be determined by this. And I'm not going to give away exactly what that entails, but it is kind of cool. You know, if you start to play this and you think this is kind of cool, you'll probably want to keep playing. It doesn't really get to be boring or excessively repetitive, I'd say. The game does have an okay length for a game, but overall it practically is just an expansion pack. You know, it's got the two new lightsabers, it's got, I think, two new weapons. You know, you've got, you've got a new pistol, woohoo, and the concussion rifle has returned. That's about it, you know. The rest of the weapons are the same, and, you know, your basic enemy is the same. Yeah, the graphics are the same. It's an expansion pack, let's be honest. Although you don't need, you know, Jedi Outcast to play Jedi Academy. It does also add a couple of new multiplayer modes, such as, I think it's called Power Duel, which is where two players face off against a third player. And that's kind of cool. So yeah, overall, you know, if you really like the engine of Jedi Outcast, and most of us do, you might like this one also.